I'm Dom, and welcome to my workshop. Hello, everyone. I hope you're well. Thank you so much for joining me for another video. Vespa update. I got back Friday night hoping that the DVLA had posted me in the logbook. No, still haven't got it. Uh, now I'm going to be gone till next Friday again. So I'll keep everything crossed. If anyone's watching that works at the DVLA, can you just bump me up the list and just get me the logbook for the Vespa? I'm desperate to get out on it. <laughs> Sunday afternoon, just about midday, just finishing unloading the van. I've uh, been to the boot sale. Uh, you may have seen it on my Instagram. And oh my goodness, went down to one in sort of, where was it? Where was it? Hang on. Whistable. Near Whitstable. Always a little bit nervous when I sort of go to these new boot sales because it's just like, is it gonna be any good? I've only got one Sunday morning every week and it's like, where am I gonna spend it? So like I might get there and it'd be rubbish. But it did not disappoint. It was absolutely just awesome. Look at all this stuff I've got. I've just been unloading the van now. Look at that. So this is beautiful old. It's like a sea chest, it's come from a ship. It used to belong to this guy. Mr. F.J. Rigdon. F R in front of me. Just look at that paintwork. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's got all these little stamps on it. Where it's been shipped around and moved around. Look inside. Oh. <gasps> look. How cool is this? I just think it's beautiful. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. It's massive, I don't really need it. 40 quid, uh, and I just thought, 40 pounds, I can't leave it there. I really, honestly, I just, I, I love it. I missed out on that one last week, weirdly. I found another one this week. I was like, right, that's it, I'm, <laughs> I'm not missing out on this one. And then I've got a beautiful selection of Whitworth and Imperial spanners. Look, I've got two of these the same. It's like collecting Pokemon cards. <laughs> Snail ones, they're nice, I love those. Cool old mole grips, they're really nice. They're gonna be handy. Got this lovely hammer. The head's a bit loose, but I don't know if you can see that, but it's um, it's leather. Yes, yeah, so it's just like a nice soft hammer when you don't want to damage the surface you're hammering. I think I want a 20p each. Never really liked buying individual spanners because I would just end up with too many random spanners. I kind of like them in sets. I have quite a strict rule of only buy the set of spanners if they're in a full set. Otherwise, if there's one missing, it's useless. And I was rummaging through this pot full of all these, these spanners. And I just thought, mate, you know what? I'll just have the lot. They were so cheap. He did me a really good price. I'll just have the lot and I'll just sift through here. And I think I've got about four complete sets of different makes and then a pile of old random ones. So I've done well. This is, <laughs> this is awesome. Absolutely brilliant. I can now get, I've got doubles. So I can take some to the repair shop and have some here. Look at this beautiful thing. It gets better and better. I think I've got a bit of an obsession with these old engineers boxes. I think I've got one, two, three, four, four. I've got four, oh, five. And now I've got another one. So that's about six, I think. I've got one for my paintbrushes. I have one for my taps and dyes. Because of the obscure stuff we end up working on at the repair shop, it's all random threads and different sizes. So I end up with different screwdrivers and different taps and dyes and cutters and things like that for all these different jobs. And I can't bear to throw them away. So. These little uh, engineer's boxes are just perfect for keeping all my bits and bobs in. And they're really good for portable as well, so I can take it down to the repair shop. But look, it's absolutely full. Look. These are all boxes of screws. Every single one is full, they're just completely full. Look. And none of them are rusty. They've been kept really well. Okay, they're rusty. This drawer, look, full. I'll bring them down to the repair shop and I'll put them in a little pile there. And there will just be so many times when we need them. And how nice is that? What a nice touch, being able to repair something that's, you know, made in England in the 50s and the 40s and be able to repair it and screw it back together with the same stock, like the same original British made screws that they would have used when these things were new. That is just, I just think it's magical. And it's those little details that I really like. And quite often when I've given things back to people, they stand there at the bench and they look around and they really kind of, oh look, and you've done that and you've done that. And you could just tell, I don't know what it is about it, but putting these old things back in place on these old items is just awesome. I love it. It was brilliant. I had a really good morning. But again, that means I've done nothing on the Defender. It's still there. 
stressing me out. It's getting on for one o'clock now. I'm gonna try and get a good few hours in. I'm gonna bolt down the aluminium framework and then probably start on the stainless steel. See that? I've just been putting them through with sort of temporary bolts here and there that are all a bit too long, not quite right. We've got bolts, lock nuts, nylocks, washers, spring washers. Um, I'm using these spring washers. So that, see that split in it? That is a spring washer. That little bit kicking up stops the bolt or the nut or the head, wherever you put it, if you put it on the back of the nut, from working loose with vibration. Because obviously this thing's gonna be driving around, it's gonna be shaking around. I don't want any of these nuts and bolts to come loose. So by using those little washers, whatever you're working on, if it's like a bicycle or, or something that's gonna be shaking around, and vibrating, an engine, something like that, it's a good idea to use those washers. They just like an anti-vibration, they stop, uh, or they help to stop the nuts working their way loose. Right, in the next few hours, I'm gonna sit here, try and get all of these bolts replaced and put the nice new stainless steel ones in. The rivet nuts that I've put into the body are also stainless steel, so it's stainless against stainless. I'll be greasing them up just in case someone in the future has to take them apart. I'll be very pleased to get this bolted in forever. I've started making the first stainless steel piece of cladding for the back of the Land Rover. It's quite complicated how I've decided to do it because I want it to look nice, basically, and I want it to perform well and be nice and secure. This is the stainless steel I'm using. It's 0.9, so it's, it, stainless steel is quite hard. This is quite thin, um, but you get away with it being thin because I've spent so much time making that solid aluminium box section structure so that the stainless steel can be nice and thin to try and save weight. Now, the problem with using such thin stainless steel is, look, it's bendy. The pieces, like in between the box section, the hollow pieces, I don't want to just be sort of loose and flapping and wobbling around. So I also have to consider these raw cut edges. I really don't want any of them to be on show because it's just not, uh, it's not, not professional. It's not a good thing to do because it's going to be a sharp edge. Even if I sand it clean, it's just not the way to go. Using my beautiful old Edwards box pan folder, I love that old thing. You see what I've done? I've folded over these edges folded over that one, folded over that one, folded over that one. And by doing that, compare that, bending all over the place, to this one, solid as you like. So once I've slipped that into position, push that down, I'm gonna bond it in place with a seam sealer, like a, a panel adhesive, and then rivet it in place. Trust me, that is not going anywhere. <laughs> it is quite time consuming doing it like this, but the end result is gonna be worth it. It's gonna be so much stronger, much more solid, and then all the bits you'll see will be this nice little rolled edge. Anyway, I'll take you over now and you can see how it'll fit. Have a look. I cannot believe that just went in as easy as that. Bit of perspective, right, this is the near side. Back door's gonna swing open sort of that way. The coffee machine will be in there. They'll be standing here. The back door will be open there with my shelves on the back of the door. Come here, get your coffee, come around here. This is gonna be the shelf. So this is all gonna be cladded and closed in. And then there's gonna be a shelf across the middle here. So there can be drinks or whatever you, whatever you fancy in there. So this is the piece of stainless that I just folded. So that's smooth, it wraps down in there. You can see what I'm trying to do here? For that side panel, I'll do the same again. Fold that one, fold that one, fold the bottom one in, the top one, and then make another one to put in there. So I just need to make one there, one there, one there, and then one up there, and then from underneath, I'll glue that in, and then I've just put a couple of rivets there into the box section, and that will hold it perfectly well. I can make another one there. Once I've made one for the cupboard side there, that's gonna be like that, I need to make another one for this side that actually has that corner on it, and then it has to come this way, so it'd be like a Z, to cover this side as well. So that is the plan. That's what I'm gonna do. I've made that first one, but now it's about six o'clock. It's taken me ages to do these nuts and bolts. All afternoon. Oh, and I've missed one. Damn it. That may seem like a small bit of progress on the Defender, but trust me, that is a big hurdle. Getting that first piece of stainless cut and folded up and fitting as nice as it does, I'm over the moon. That's really, really good. It's really positive. It's nice knowing that the idea I had is gonna work and it's gonna be okay. 
I will now pack my bits up, wash my hands, get in the van and head down to a repair shop. Got a nice clean van. Well, no doubt it's probably gonna be filthy again. By the end of the week, it's just covered in bird poo. It's so annoying. It's a new clean start. I'm looking forward to getting into it. I'm the first one here. This very rarely happens. This feels a bit like the uh, calm before the storm. <laughs> when it gets going and once it gets started, it's, uh, you know, it gets busy. It gets really busy. So it's so funny to be here. And there'd be no one here, nothing going on. Well, I guess the fact I'm here so early means I should come and take you on a little wander around the museum again. Cool update on this building. They're doing so well. All the structural stuff is done now. That team have left. And now there's a different team coming in to do all the lime render. Wattle and Daub is all going on. I'm really excited this week. The last two jobs I was working on, the last week and the week before that, a little bit, have finished. They've gone, I've given them back. They were over the moon. And this week I'm starting a new one and it's a big job. And I'm sort of in the process now, I've started to take it all apart and there's a lot to it. And it hasn't worked for 30 odd years, I think, or something ridiculous. Oh, hang on, I've got lost. It's closed. We can't go in. It's just, I don't know how many buildings they've got here. I'll try and find out. But I just keep finding more things. I'm back on track now. I know where I am, because there's the grid shell. It's a new building, so it's unusual to the other buildings in the museum. You know, and it's won awards for design. It's just absolutely beautiful. I don't know how close I can get. I'm gonna get myself in trouble here. Hang on. Oh, there's people in there. Oh, I am gonna get told off. I knew it. Can I come in? Uh, yes, you can. Well, there we go. This morning is full of surprises. A little sneak preview of inside the grid shell. How cool is that? Resetting those wheels and all the gypsy wagons they're working on. It's just absolutely brilliant. I'd love to do stuff like that. I'd love to have a go at the painting. Anyone out there got a wagon like that? Come on, send it into the show. Let us fix it. <laughs> Look at the view from up here. But, um, oh, look, my battery's gonna die. Right, I'll run back to the van. I'll get my lead, I'll put it on charge, and I'll try and catch up with you again at lunchtime. Lunchtime again, off to get my coffee. It's supposed to be spring. The weather has taken another turn, but hey. Thank you very much, Parwell. They sent me this coat with the welder. And, and look at it, it's perfect for my little lunchtime excursions in the rain to go and get a coffee. Today on Nature with Dom. <coughs> this one's shouting at me, what's he saying? <coughs> what does that mean? <coughs> I think it might mean go away. This week, I don't know what's happening this week. It's a bit of a funny one. It's been a really good week, actually. But the weather, it just kind of keeps teasing us. Like, it looks sunny, it looks nice and warm, then it's gone again. Lucia's been working on a big project. Um, actually, I think she's had two or three. Um, but uh, one of them is leaving this afternoon. So it's a bit of a special day. I know she's very anxious. Um, we all get very anxious just on that day. Uh, you have to give these things back. So I brought her down a present. But um, this may seem a little bit strange, but last year I grew a load of tomato plants from seed and I brought one down for Lucia and she spent all summer, she repotted it, grew it up, put a little little um, bamboo cane, grew it up a stick and it got massive. It got really tall, got loads of flowers and she was really excited and then the flowers died and she didn't get any fruit. And then I, <laughs> I felt so bad. She spent so long growing this poor tomato plant all of mine had fruit and I had loads of, I had loads of tomatoes, absolutely loads. And I kept coming in, being, oh yeah, there's loads, there's loads more, the greenhouse is full of them. And she was like, yeah, great Dom, thanks. So this year I've grown another one. I don't know what type of tomato it is. I don't know if anyone out there can tell, but it's just grown from a seed of what I had in the greenhouse. Oh, here she comes now, here she comes now. <gasps> Quick, let me hide it. Lucia, <laughs> you okay? <laughs> oh, Dom. This is a homegrown tomato plant. I was just explaining, I did this last year, you spent all summer growing training it. it, growing it. How it was, big did it, it get? Like Jack and the Beanstalk, it grew <laughs> and it grew and it grew. And, and but no tomatoes. No tomatoes. Two flowers. Two, is that it? And I had two flowers on it yeah. and no tomatoes. Well, 
I've got a good feeling about this one. Look at it. Look how strong it looks. It looks fabulous. Yeah, it's been in yeah. my car. It's been in the van in the, on the dashboard for like a week. So, yeah. Oh, thank you, my little Dom tomato. This is it. It's a tomato. <laughs> <laughs> I expect it. I'm looking for six foot tall. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Otherwise, I'm coming for you. <laughs> for the guarantee. You've got to reveal this afternoon. Oh my God, yeah. I'm so nervous. You it's don't need to be nervous because it looks absolutely beautiful. It's, it's really great. It's the best so far. To be honest, it is the best so far. Yeah? Okay. You'll be okay. They'll love it. Yeah. Well done, Lucia. <laughs> See you soon. Bye. Saturday mornings. I do love coming to the workshop early in the morning. It's just so quiet. I think this is definitely my happy place. None of the other units are, are open. There's nobody else here. Oh, my little Land Rover's still here. One day, one day, won't be long. Big thank you to Par Weld. It's so nice coming into the workshop and just seeing that thing there. It just makes me smile. That welder is absolute beast. I can't wait to use it. Hopefully this weekend, I'll be doing some aluminium with it. Yeah, it's about half eight, Saturday morning, and I'm back in the workshop. I am determined to get some good work done on that Defender. So the next video might well be some Defender progress uh, instead of a vlog. I can't wait to get it done, really. There's been so much prep and so much work and so much planning. It's really, really rewarding and really nice to see it finally coming back together. Vesper update, because it's Saturday, you won't have to wait until the next video to find out. DVLA still haven't sent me the logbook. Another week's gone by, another week without the logbook. I'm really sorry, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. If you have, let me know in the comments below. I'll read them, I'll reply to as many as I can. Give me a subscribe, tell all your friends. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.